Uh, Father, again, um, we just want to continue this time of uh, worship as we now get into uh, your word um, and uh, take a look uh, today at, at this powerful message, uh, the gospel. And um, in the Lord, as we uh, give us understanding, Lord, um, I pray again for the illuminating power of your Holy Spirit, uh, the ministry that he does, uh, the work that he does, and uh, only, only that ministry working through your scripture um, are we um, able to understand. Uh, and um, uh, Lord, it's, it's, um, it takes um, all of you, the, uh, the triune God, working together uh, to, um, 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 to continue to sanctify us practically. And so, Lord, we, our request is today um, uh, that we would be sanctified, which is a, in alignment with uh, what Jesus prayed for us. Uh, and, uh, and the answer then is yes and amen, and uh, according to your word. So, again, we trust you, we trust your word, and uh, we trust that um, our minds are going to be changed. Uh, we trust that, um, Lord, we are, are going to be um, established in you. And as we take a look at some uh, difficult things, Lord, um, uh, that are against your gospel, Lord, we, we, want to, uh, we want to understand that this is not a, um, we're not doing a, a performing a game, but, but this is serious. Uh, are the message that we bring to people, Lord, um, what we say, uh, although you, it's, it's not based solely on, on me, yes, your, your word is what is what changes, but but each one of us will give an account for the message that we bring, Lord. Uh, not necessarily not the person's response, but the message that we bring. Um, and so, Lord, we want that message uh, to be um, uh, just solely from you. And and so, Lord, help us as we take a look at this, and uh, and bring a glory and honor to you and your good works. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. All right, so we are in Romans, and I know we just said set down, but we're starting to, uh, if we may please stand back up, because we are going to read this introduction through um, 16. Uh, we'll probably get, <coughs> we might get through 16 today, where there is a meeting after church, uh, so that we might, mm, we'll see where we get. And um, all right. Everybody, Romans chapter 1, we're going to start at verse 1 and read all the way through 17. Romans 1. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh and declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Through him we have received grace and apostleships for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. To all who are in Rome, beloved of God called saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers making request if by some means now at last I may find a way in the will of God to come to you, for I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gifts so that you may be established, that is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Now, I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often planned to come to you but was hindered until now that I might have some fruit among you also, just as among the other Gentiles. I am, a debtor to both to, uh, I am a debtor both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to wise and unwise. So as much as is in me, 
I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen. You may be seated. Sorry, I get a little excited there because it is something to get excited about. It's, it, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, 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 it, it is the gospel of God. It is the gospel of God. It is the good news message of God. This is what we're talking about. And this is what Paul is ready to preach. You know, verses 16 through 17 of chapter 1, these are the key verses. Um, I think, hold on one second. Did I leave my pointer down there? One second. Thanks. All right. So these two verses are the key verses of the book of Romans. They contain the central theme of the whole book. So if, if anybody has ever written a research paper, no logic, you can refer to this as Paul's thesis statement. This is his argument. This is what he is posing. The, again, the main point of the book of Romans is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, the spiritual salvation of mankind hinges on this gospel message. Paul proclaims um, here for, oops, sorry. I gotta get, get to where I'm at. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. So in it, it is for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it, excuse me, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. This is not how Paul is employing these passages. Remember, this, this is not primarily directed at non-believers. However, again, it is the gospel message, but may I remind you that Paul is addressing who? The beloved of God, the saints, the ones who have been declared holy. In other words, Paul's not writing to the saints to save them from sin's penalty as they have already been justified having uh, already believed the gospel. Because remember what we just read, they are in fact, uh, the reason that he's writing is that he's heard of their faith. He's already heard that they've believed. So, so the way that Paul is employing this here is not primarily for that. It is for the, the, the preaching of the gospel is, uh, is for the purpose, um, uh, excuse me, of their sanctification. Um, so it contains instructions then in that sanctification. We're taking a look at that in Sunday school. What does that word mean? It means to be, it's sanctified, to be set apart, and this is a part of the spiritual growth process. So Paul is instructing the holy saints here in righteousness for the purpose of their spiritual growth. All of the book of Romans is for the purpose of their spiritual growth. They need to grow into the spiritual man of whom God has already declared them to be. And this is done, again, by the grace and the knowledge of God. It's all God's work, working in and through, uh, giving them the desire of their heart, giving them the, the desire to be holy. Again, and he works in us then both to will, he works in our will, and then he even gives us the ability to do these things, to operate in righteousness, again, through his son, because we are in Christ Jesus. We have the imputed righteousness of Christ. It's not my righteousness. It's the imputed righteousness of Christ. It is, is the fact that it's the truth that we are now born again into Christ Jesus. So, again, the purpose of the book of Romans is primary, primarily for the believer's sanctification. Now it does deal, we'll look at justification. We'll look at sin uh, in the next couple weeks and Paul will look at the, the, the sin issue, the nature, 
and he will look at it in depth. Um, so, before we go too far into these verses, I just want to reiterate the, the gospel of Christ. So my first question for us, and anybody can answer, but what does the word gospel mean? Good news. Here it is, the gospel. The euangelion is the Greek term. It means good news or good telling. So this, this is in your, in your handout. I meant to bring it up so that I could um, follow along, but uh, pay attention because there's some kind of tricky questions in there today. Um, but um, this message is good news. Again, and we talked about this before. Where does this good news originate? It originates from God, and it's to man. It is not from man to man, although we bring it to man as those messengers, but this message has come from God, so it is not incumbent on me to change, to add to, or subtract anything to this gospel message. This good news message, the moment that I touch it, I put my filthy, nasty hands on it, and it has become a tainted message. It's I've thrown my righteousness on that, and we know what that is. So, the English word gospel is transliterated from the Greek word euangelion, which simply means good news or good telling. Thus, the subject of verse 16 is the good news. I understand this is elementary, seems elementary, but it is critical that we understand the nature of the news that we have been given from God to share with the lost. May I say this? There is bad news. There is bad news for the lost, for those who have not believed. But there are, and can you overemphasize bad news? You know, that's the question. But we are to bring the good news, and this is telling me that the good news is the power of God to salvation. Yes, there is bad news. There is bad news because without regeneration, without the work of Christ, without the shed blood for remission of sin, and us not accepting that, we will stand before God and we will try and stand before God based on our own works, and guess what? If I haven't received the works of God and I've tried to stand before God on my, based on my own effort, I will be cast into outer darkness. I, 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 I would go to hell. I would be separated eternally from a God that created me and loved me. But here's the thing, that bad news did not originate from God, it originated from man. This is what we have to offer. So we can look at the Bible in one of two ways. We can look at it from man's perspective or we can look at it from God's pers perspective. What has God done? That's what I'm promoting. What has God done? Has God given good gifts or has God given bad gifts? Simple question. Where does goodness come from? Good God. That is, it is the good God that the message comes from. There is no good without God. The word good doesn't even exist without the word God. It is critical that we understand the nature of the news that we've been given. Again, yes, it's true. A sinner must first understand their need for salvation. A person must understand that they are lost before they can be saved. However, we are ambassadors in a foreign country, in a hostile foreign country. This world killed our Savior for the message that he brought. Everywhere Paul went, riots ensued. When he brought this gospel message, there was division, there was chaos, and that's why they persecuted him. That's why. They persecuted him because the po political leaders, there's, there's something going on over here, and, and who's the root cause of it? Oh, it's Paul. 
Well, what do we do with Paul? He's a Roman citizen. He's a Jew. What are we going to do with this guy? You know, so again, over and over and over again, Paul fell back, but ultimately his Ro- Roman citizenship did not save him physically. He, he, he died for this good news message. So, all that being said, and then let's put this in light and context, um, we are bringing a message of reconciliation from a holy and righteous God to a lost and dying world. And it is not the badness of man that brings one to repentance to change their mind. That's what the word repentance, the metanoia, that's what that Greek word means, a changing of the mind. Remember, it is the goodness of God that leads man to repentance. The Bible says it is the goodness of God that leads man to repentance. That's, that's something that you know, we, we, we contend with. It's, 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 it's God's goodness. It's the revelation of himself of who he is and what he has done for mankind. And the demonstration is this. The demonstration is that while we were yet sinners, Christ Jesus died for us. He spilled his blood, his very life source, as a sacrifice, a substitutionary sacrifice, so that you and I can be reconciled to God. This is the gift. This is the good news. So the next question we should ask ourselves then, you know, what is the good news about? Or what is the content of the good news message? And in order to know the answer to this question, we must know who the good news is about. And Paul states in verse 16 that the good news is of Christ. Christ means the anointed one. He is the promised Jewish Messiah. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Jesus Christ is the Son of God and the Son of Man. He is the God-man. He is 100% God. He is 100% man. And this isn't in my notes, but I just want to real quickly, just in passing, there is a, uh, a, a heretical movement going on today. They, they call themselves, it's, it's NAR. It's New Apostolic Reformation. New Apostolic Reformation. Be careful. As your pastor, careful what you eat. What they are promoting only is that he is the son of man. They deny his deity. They deny Jesus' deity, that he was completely absent of his deity on the earth. It's NAR, New Apostolic Reformation. Just be careful. Um, it is, it's heretical. To say that God was just, you know, to say that Jesus, what he, he did solely, you know, again, that he walked the earth. See, his, his, his deity was veiled from man. We talked about that a, a while ago. He was 100% God, 100% man. His deity remained veiled until he revealed it um, uh, to, you know, what was it, Peter, James, and John in the transfiguration. They saw his deity, and that's why, uh, you know, later they would go on to say, we have seen this, you know, we have seen the glory of our Lord, we have seen these things. So, uh, just be careful of that. So, what is the work that Christ did? He died on a cross and shed his blood. He was buried in a tomb and he rose in bodily form from the dead. This is, these are important, uh, this is important in the content of the gospel message. There's a, there was another uh, philosophy and it still is today that, that it was only the spirit and that you and I only rise in the spirit and our bodily, we don't get a new body, but it's just a spirit. Um, and that, that is a false, it's even in songs, you know, the, the spirit in the sky, all, all that, you know, it, it's, not, it's not just a spirit, it, it is body. So what we do 
in, in our bodies, yes, it, 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 it matters. And, uh, and so that's, it's important, uh, you know, that new body is going to be uh, incorruptible where this one is cor- corruptible. But those things do matter. And uh, Paul spends the, all of 1 Corinthians 15, and within that contains the doctrine of the bodily resurrection of Christ. That's what 1 Corinthians 15 is all about. Again, that chapter is not like this one. It's written to the saints. They've already believed it. They've already received it. The vanity is their gospel message has lost its power when they start preaching a bodiless gospel. When they start preaching a bodiless gospel, there's no longer power in it. Because, again, we can just go around in lawlessness and do whatever we want, right? Because the body's going to just be done away with. That's not the case, and, and that's not true. So, uh, and why then? These are other questions. So why is all this, and we just talked a little bit about it, but why is all this significant? What did the work accomplish? Or even if we just want to make it personal, why is it good news to me? Well, it's good news to me, to all of us, because the God-man, Jesus Christ, performed a work that paid for our sin's penalty, which was death. The penalty of sin was death. We deserved this. Not the resurrection, but we deserved to be dead and buried. That's what we deserved. Christ died in our place. A substitutionary death. I owed sin's penalty, however, there was no way that I could satisfy the debt because that debt, it had to be paid by a spotless, sinless man. Had to be paid by a spotless, sinless man. You see, they had to keep all of God's law, the individual did. They had to then pay for sin's penalty. That's the, that's the only way, because Christ was sinless, he was spotless, he was the just, and he died, and now he's become the justifier. And I am neither spotless nor sinless. None of us are spotless or sinless. Christ alone is the spotless, sinless lamb who took away the sin of the world. His shed blood was acceptable was the the acceptable sacrifice to God the Father because the sin debt was owed to God the Father. And this was the acceptable, pleasing sacrifice that God accepted for the penalty of sin was the shed blood of Christ on the cross. It is important to understand that Christ's death was a sacrificial, substitutionary death. It was a sacrificial, substitutionary death death because there are many false gospels in the world that would have you believe otherwise. For example, uh, there was a guest uh, uh, teacher who filled in for our regular pastor teacher uh, at an assembly uh, my family and I attended in Florida, and he was teaching from Matthew 5, 13 through 20, and uh, mind you, he was preaching grace alone through faith alone, in Christ alone, he, he said that. And he was quoting scripture from Romans 10.4, and buddy, I was, I was getting excited. And he said, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. And I'm like, yes, keep going. And I was getting encouraged. And then it came out. Then the heart spoke. Then his heart spoke. In the middle of preaching the gospel, he stated that, and I quote, you now have righteousness that is imparted to you, imputed to you. Yes, that's true. And that righteousness, I added that part, but it just says that surpasses the Pharisees and the scribes, the righteousness of Jesus Christ, which is also true. And then he says, through this great exchange, 
his life for your life. His life on the cross, your life in self-sacrifice to him, there's an exchange. That is a false gospel. Do you see it? Some of you might not. Some of you might say, what's the big deal? What's the difference between substitute and exchange? Well, think about it. There is a vast, a vast difference between substitute and and exchange. If salvation is an exchange, this would mean that I must do an undisclosed amount of work in order to be saved. And if my works are not satisfactory, at the end of my life, I remain unjustified uh, before God. And we know, again, our works, our righteousness is as filthy rags. This idea of an exchange contradicts all that the gospel message is. It's no longer the good news of Christ, it's uncertain news that's solely dependent on my performance. This message proclaims that Jesus didn't pay at all. He paid some, part or most, and I must pay the rest. When you say that Christ's death is an exchange, and I must live my life in service, that is saying that the Messiah's work, the Savior's work is not sufficient. The Savior did not save. His grace was insufficient. His blood was not enough. You've made yourself the sacrifice. You have made in this gospel yourself the sacrifice. Now you must live your life in self-sacrifice to him in order to be saved. Salvation is no longer a gift. It has become a trade, a barter, an exchange. It's no longer, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. It becomes, behold, me, myself, and I, the unholy trinity who took away my own sin. Do you see the difference? May God give you ears to hear, and may God give you May, may the Holy Spirit illuminate this. I am a poor, I can be poor at translating this sometimes. This is a false gospel. Jesus paid it all. Yes, he paid it all in his blood. The sin debt has been paid in full. And I simply receive it by believing it, by trusting it through the grace of God, by the grace of God, through faith. I have faith. I have put all my faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ and his shed blood for the remission of my sin on Calvary's cross. That's where my trust is. I have nothing to offer God. I have nothing to offer God. I have nothing. Filthy rags. Am I going to throw those on that beautiful, glorious work of God? Am I going to say, it wasn't good enough, God. I need to live my life. No, Paul, a bondservant. I have been set free by this. It is for freedom that we've been set free. We are free. The gospel, the power of the gospel message has set us free. And who Christ has set free is free indeed. I am a free man screaming to you guys today. Man, It is the gospel of God that is the power of salvation to everyone who believes. That's the one condition. That's it, period. It's not easy believism because let me tell you, believing is not easy. The pride that's in me that stirs up when I just simply receive this and and, and come to the realization, man, I've got nothing. God came into my life and he tore me down he is a he is a wrecking ball and that's an understatement he is that great rock that just came down and and, and crushed all that I am all who I am is dead and this then again this goes against we died with Christ we don't continue living trying to hash out trying to do good works Again, it's Christ that works in us, both to will and to do, and it's of his good pleasure. It's it's God's good pleasure. It pleases God to work in and through his kids to bring his message to others so that some might be saved. Because it's the will of the Lord that not any, that no one should perish. That's the will of God, and he's done it all so that none have to perish but pride, 
arrogance, deception, the enemy, what, what, whatever it is, we say, hmm, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make my own gospel. You know, thanks God for doing the 90%. I've got it from here. You know, I'll take care of the rest. How audacious is that in the light of this message? It's the good news of God. In this, again, you've made yourself the sacrifice. You become the sacrifice. Now you must live your life in self-sacrifice to him in order to be saved. Again, it's no longer a gift. This is not the gospel message, and it is so, so, so subtle. And this is what we're hoping, you know, again, this is what discipleship is about. We are a disciple of Christ, not of a man. We are a disciple of his word. This is how we know God. Every experience I have outside of this needs to be brought back into here and, ex and, and checked. Because if I'm going solely off of my experience, my experience could be false. There will be, the Bible says, signs and wonders. And somebody can come in this door, lay their hand on somebody, and they could be healed or whatever. How do you test that? How do you test the fruit of that? Is that the fruit? No. You listen to their message. You go back to, your, to the word of God and you search the scripture. That's the fruit, is the message that they bring. And if it is anything other than the gospel message of God, no, it's a false gospel. It falls under the anathema of God that Paul talks about in, in, in Galatians 1. <laughs> And again, let's not confuse spiritual birth and spiritual maturity. <coughs> Bless you. Two different things. Spiritual birth has to take place first. You must be born again. That has to happen first. And let me state, state this. A baby has to be born before far before it can ever be enlisted into warfare. You wouldn't just send a baby out to war, would you? Here's your hand grenades and guns and, you know, go on. No. Discipleship. That's, that's what the church, that's the teachers in the church role are, is, is to make disciples of the word of God, not of ourselves, because Paul warns about those too to the Ephesians. He says, for I know when I leave you, there will be savage wolves that come in among you. And he looks at the Ephesian elders and he says, even some from among you will rise up and draw away from them disciples for themselves. You know, follow me, follow me, follow this. Oh, brother and sister, saints of God, holy ones, you follow the word. You follow Christ Jesus. This is what you follow. And anybody that stands up here that comes in this church that you hear outside, you hold them to this. You bring them back to this because we have to be careful in the fellowship that we keep. And if it's outside of God's word, you know, there's, there's grace and, 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 and all that, yes, but are they teachable? Do they remain teachable? That's, that's the question. Are they willing to concede to God's word? Are we willing to open it up and search the scripture? Are we willing to take a look at it? If so, in the, in the Greek, if we're having trouble understand it, are we willing to you know, read other books by that author? Are we willing to look at it in its greater context? You know, we're, we're family, you know, and family sometimes, guess what? We don't agree. And, and there are things that, you know, and sometimes it's okay to, to disagree on things, but the gospel message is not. That's the, that's the line. That's the foundation. When you attack the gospel message, you diminish the power of God unto salvation. People are confused. They receive a garbled 
gospel, a confusing gospel, and now they're confused and they walk around for years like I did because I, I, that's what I believed. I believed, oh, it was because of the prayer I said. That saved me. I believed uh, it was, you know, I, I was that person down here every day rededicating my life because I, I didn't understand, you know, I, and I remember asking pastors, like, how, how do I receive, and this is so, now that I look at it, man, the pride that was in me, how do I receive the grace of God? I don't know how. And nobody s- took me to Scripture and said, look, believe. You know, you, you, you believe this work. This is what you believe. You put your faith in the shed blood of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. You trust that Jesus Christ paid it all. You trust the accomplishment that he paid for sin's penalty of death in full. To tell us I, it's finished. Accounting term. The sin debt is paid in full. Your, 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 your account when you receive that, when you receive the work of God through faith, you are justified, not because of your works, but because God has imputed to you this righteous work of his son, Christ Jesus, and all his righteousness. That's why we have spiritual blessing because it's a part of that imputation. You know, there's a Lewis Berry Chafer uh, sat down and pulled out about, there's about 30, he, he, there's, there's ongoing, there's more, but it, just in his estimation, you know, there's about 32 things that happened to you the moment you believed. 32 things that happened to you the moment you believed that Christ did, that God did, that God equipped you with so that you might know and so that he is working in you. And in part of it, you have to understand it. If we don't if we don't get into the word, we don't know what those are. You know, if the word doesn't get into me and start changing my mind on these things, we don't know what they are. So again, spiritual birth has to take place first. This idea of exchange confuses the matter of justification. So now, I am completely incapable of justifying myself. My righteousness, again, is, is as filthy rags, and I need something supernatural to happen. Again, I need to be born again which is this piece right here, justification. God now looks at us as being justified, not because of my work, but because of the cross work of Christ, because of this, because of what he did, and when he paid sin's penalty, we now stand justified before a holy God. So, you want to talk about a miracle? The fact that a man, woman, man, can be born again, being born from, remember salvation is from and to, we were saved from sin's penalty to eternal life. We were from Adam into Christ. This is the point, this is the argument that, that Paul will make all throughout um, when we get to 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 Romans uh, uh, 5, I believe it's in. So the single condition for being justified before God is faith alone in Christ alone. We simply believe, trust, and receive the grace gift of God. Paul confirms that the one condition for receiving salvation is by believing in Romans 3.26. If you want to turn there in your own Bibles, that's fine. I put it up here. I just got it fit. So, so Paul says, but now the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. To some, no, to all and on all who believe for there is no difference for all have sinned and this is at the end of Paul putting everybody under sin Jew Greek it doesn't matter there is no racial discrimination there is no political discrimination there is no economical discrimination 
under this penalty, we are all flat on our face, uh, children of wrath before God until this new birth takes place. So there is no difference for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Being Roman saints, remember, justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, and yes, you are justified if you have believed, but being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation, propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness because in his forbearance God had passed over the sins that were previously committed to demonstrate at the present time which the demonstration was you know began there at the cross to demonstrate at this at the present time what what would have been present to Paul his righteousness and it continues because it's the, the you have to understand that this is a, in the Greek, this is in the aorist tense, the, uh, uh, the, the, the work that was done, salvation, it, it, the just, it's a one-time action with ongoing results. This one act has ongoing results. To demonstrate at this present time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. I showed this slide before. Do you remember this uh, quote by Lance Doc Latham? Anybody know who he, or remember who he is? Tammy knows. Oh, you know? Who? Co-founder of Awana. And he attributes the value of salvation where it belongs. He says, one who discovers the gospel, one who discovers the gospel will instantly realize that the sole basis of his salvation is the work of Christ on Calvary's cross. Saving faith depends alone on the value of Calvary. All other possible sources for the assurance of salvation are counterfeit. And I use this quote because he says it much better than I can. Again, this is a gift. This is a grace gift from God to man. He gave his son. And the only way for a person to enjoy a gift is to simply receive it. If you reject the gift, you do not participate in its blessings. That gift is meaningless to you. It's the gift of God. If you try and purchase, trade, or work for it, it's no longer a gift. You've done something to earn it. Now you can boast about it. And... If, if, if you were trying to give me a gift, just uh, because, let's say, let's say God moved on, on your heart and you tried to give my wife a gift or me a gift or my daughter a gift, and they were like, oh, no, 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 I want to pay you for it. That's, no. I mean, that's like, pff, no. I, you know, again, that's our pride. This is, this is, this is what man does. We, we want we have, and, and we studied it when we went through the, judge, when the book of Judges. We studied it in Israel. Israel, over and over and over again, they tried to do these things. You know, they would repent. They would get away from God. And God says, no, you're not going to do this with your entire ar army, Gideon. You're only going to take 300 men. Because if you take all your army, you get the glory. This is about... God sanctifying his holy name. There's much more than salvation, brothers and sisters. This is something that we'll never, we can never, we'll never stop praising the Lord for, that's for sure. However, God wants us to walk. 
He wants us to talk. He wants us to bring his good news message to a lost and dying world. He wants us to, to be on, uh, you know, on par with what his message is. In the same way that we received it is the same way that we walk. Again, I said this this morning, you know, it's by grace through faith and we, we trust the word of God. We simply believe what God has said. Every time Israel got off course, what did they do? They, ne- they neglected the law of God. They neglected what was given to them. They neglected his word. They said, no, we've got it from here. We're doing good. And over and over and over again, that is the story of us. We, we, we stray away. We wander away, you know, from from the pre- from its, its line upon line and its precept upon precept, and that's why we're teaching on Sunday school. It's so important to, to understand the context of what you're reading, all those questions, you know, who, what, where, when, why, how, you know, who is Paul addressing, what's the audience, what's the occasion, you know, all those things. Is this, is this physical salvation? Is it spiritual salvation? You know, what's its nature? Is it past, present, future? You know, again, back to this, is it, is it justification, sanctification, glorification? And there's some verses that only talk about justification and glorification. You know, you'll ask yourself, hey, where's, where's sanctification? Well, because it's just simply talking about you are being, you have been justified and you will be glorified simply because this is not conditional on losing salvation. This is conditional with being, ex- experiencing the freedom from the fact that you have been set free from the power of sin, there's just a lasting effect that, has, that is there. And again, we're not trusting God at his word that we're dead to that and alive to Christ. We're over here playing with it. You know, we're, we're, we're petting this sin or whatever it is, and we're playing with it. And guess what happens then? Now I am slaved. I've made myself a slave to that thing again. That's what sin does. Not that I'm still not free. That's again, 1 John 1, 9. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's it's simple. That's a familial relationship now that we have as part of the family of God. Yes, we are family one another, but we are God's children now that we have believed and we've received that regeneration that birth that takes place the moment that we believe and 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 again whether or not all those things don't have to you don't have to know all those things you know all that regeneration all that all those things to be saved it's it's again goes back to the content you know this is where you put your this is what you put the you know the shed blood of Christ on the cross for remission of sin you know the fact that he these are things that, that you bring to people that you spend time with them to see what they understand. And sharing the gospel isn't just a cookie cutter thing. You spend time with people. You find out where they're at. You listen. What do they know? What have they heard? You know, because all of us in this room have heard many different things, you know, and, 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 and some things we've believed and some things we've been corrected as the word of God got in us. And so this is so important that we understand, you know, the, the content, the person, the work, the accomplishment, and then the response, this is the only, and because believing, you're not doing anything. It's believing and repentance. It is part of the same thing because if you're believing, you've already changed your mind. You've already repented because you believed this and now you've changed your mind to this. Whatever, whatever it was you believed before, well, I believed that I was on the throne, or I believed that Muhammad was, you know, the Savior, or I believed that, you know, wh- whatever, whatever I believed, I repented the moment that I believed and had faith in Christ, because my mind has changed from this to Christ the cross of Christ. 
So these two things shouldn't be, you know, this and this. These things are, and if you, if you say that, if you say repent, just, you know, again, go back to the definition, to the lexical form, take a look at the metanoeo. It's, it's a changing of the mind. You, you, you just clearly explain, it's, it's your mind, your mind is being changed. You know, the word of God is changing your mind. And uh, praise the Lord, you know. And so, anyway, Father, um, again, we, we thank you for your word. Uh, thank you for um, your, your people again here. Thank you, God, that, um, that you are faithful and just. We thank you. We cannot thank you enough. And um, Lord, that, that for the work that you did in our place, that substitutionary death, and I pray, Lord, that if there's anybody here that, that is not clear on this, God, uh, that they, um, I'm available for questions, um, Lord, and um, we can uh, take a look at this uh, together. And I pray that they wouldn't uh, shy away from this, but simply yeah, it is the one condition. And if you um, just, you know, again, it's, it's, it's belief and it's trust uh, in the one true God. Uh, in the work that he did for your individual salvation. So, Father, again, I pray that you would continue to do the work that you do in uh, convicting the world of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. And, uh, Lord, that um, you would um, give us opportunity, Lord, that you would open doors, you would give us boldness to bring this good news message because it is a message that needs to be brought. It needs to be proclaimed, Lord, as... Um, as uh, as it has been and will continue to be, whether we proclaim it or not, but, but Lord, we, we get to be a part of that, and why would we not want to be, why would we not want to share what has been freely given to us, because we freely received it, Lord, and we just freely give it, and, and Lord, it's based off of our, our relationship that you initiated with us. You loved us first, and uh, Lord, now we know what love is, and uh, Lord, we, we want to continue in that. Uh, pray also, for today as, as we continue to worship you in song, Lord, may we uh, just respond to your gospel message and truth and be just uh, with a grateful, thankful attitude, Lord. Uh, may we uh, just focus on, 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 um, on bringing glory and honor to you and not to ourselves. And, uh, and Lord, so thank you again uh, for this time. In Jesus' name, amen.